what's up everyone hope you're all having a wonderful time so here we have my league starter for the settle of Kalgur, and it's the spectral shield throw blade gladiator the build has been really fun and super strong now when they made some changes to the gladiator ascendancy and it's uh, been a really smooth leveling progression here as well and will make you get to t6 in red maps really quickly it's also very easy to get going here. One of the perks with this is that you don't really need a weapon for this, but instead we are getting our damage from our shield instead, and the weapon just works as a stat stick basically. You get the base physical damage from the shield throw skill, and you also get the flat physical damage per armor and evasion rating on the shield here as well. And uh, then that physical damage will scale your bleeds and bleeds a element that deal physical damage over time and uh, the damage of bleeds will be higher when the enemy is moving. And one of the new ascendancy notes that the gladiator got was the jagged technique which makes bleeds aggravated and uh, this uh, basically makes enemy take the full damage here even when they are standing still. Huge boost to damage, mostly for bosses, as uh, some of them don't even move during a boss fight. And if you're on trade, you can get access to some really good shields early on. There's a, a lot of different very cheap shields, both rare and unique, so you can get uh, while leveling and also for the end game. Dawnbreaker is something that I've been using since uh, level 67 and it provides over 2k armor for only 1 chaos basically which is just insane of the value that we get from it. We also get some extra physical mitigation here as well up to 20% of physical damage taken as fire which is really helpful here and that's uh, basically the only unique that we're currently using but not really needed but just a very cheap one that you can get hands off early on. And at the moment we're currently at uh, just above 1 million bleed DPS and that's uh, pretty normal with this uh, normal setup here. You are able to do most content with this. Uh, single target is where the build really does not shine. It, uh, it do does the job for us but it uh, might take a little more time. But where the build really shines is going to be mapping and you just want as much mob density as you can get. You are basically unkillable and with the new updated Gracious Violence which got a buff here making a bleeding enemy you kill explode dealing 20% of their maximum life as physical damage. So it's really nice to get these bleed explosions when you're moving around and uh, yeah really strong mapper build overall. On the other side though the build is really tanky. Versatile Combatant got a buff for the new league, making us get more max block. Here we get also 2% spell block chance for each overcap attack block chance, which makes us able to get uh, the cap really quick here for both attack and spells. And by being the gladiator we also get access to lucky blocks. And from the more than skill passive node here, and it's uh, going to basically make us stay at 88% uh, block as long as we have block recently. And that's a huge quality of life to have. And we're also picking up one of the new shield masteries for 20 life and mana each time we blocked. So this really just makes us sustain our life uh, really easy and really makes us feel like immortal while we're doing maps. However, it is still uh, possible to get hit though, and uh, especially on bosses, this is something that uh, you will have to mitigate. Most attack and spells that they do can be blocked, but some of them you can't. So first as mentioned, we get some mitigation from our shield here. Uh, we also have the max resist from our floss here, we have one for each element. We have a sapphire, ruby and a topaz flask, and this makes us stay at around 85% of max resist. We also cap on chaos resist with this character, we got 20k armor, 5 endure charges, we are stun immune and we are also able to get full spell suppress as well on this build. So it's uh, absolutely feel like it's worth when you're taking all of these defenses and still being able to do like a million DPS without not too crazy of an investment. Overall I would say I put around maybe 4 divines right now which is uh, quite a low investment for all of the things I just mentioned. And as long as you get your shield with uh, high armor or evasion or both you're good to go basically. Iron Reflex is also stronger than ever this league with the new hybrid bases. It gives us huge amounts of armor and evasion. 
If you're lucky, you can get up to 3k armor and evasion on the body armor alone, which is a third but super strong. As uh, with this uh, node, all evasion will now converge to armor. And uh, we also get the uh, dexterity providing no bonuses to evasion anymore. And this really works uh, great with Mage Bane here as well, which makes the same here. But we also get some extra spell suppression per 15 dexterity instead. But even with all this defense, Degen is still going to be the one biggest weakness for this build. So I do recommend you to get your Chaos Resist up before trying to get your Spell Suppress. And if you feel like the Spell Suppress is overkill, the good thing is that you can make a double setup with clusters with this build. And you could almost double the damage with this instead. You just uh, remove the path to the suppressing wheel and uh, maybe even sacrifice the max resist as well. And this will free up tons of points for you to put on damage instead. And before we go over items, PUB and all the fun stuff, let me just quickly go over how I level up this character. It uh, went really fast, a bit over 7 hours it took for me, which I feel is uh, quite great for a new league. I started with the Ground Slam at level 1 for some AoE damage. Frostblade is another great option that you can use or even Spectral Throw. And when you get to level 12 you will get access to Thunder and you will really start to feel the bleeds popping off here. And you can get this before defeating the last boss in Act 1. And you have two bleed wheels just to the left of the duelist here. And if you take them plus the bleed support gem this will make you be at 95% bleed chance. And then just uh, a little bit more to the left here, you have some more bleed nodes for the last 5% here. And then at uh, level 28 is where you will get your Spectral Shield Throw. And I believe it's after you've defeated the General in Act 3. And also Shield Charge is a huge nice skill that we can use as well here. And uh, putting it in a 4 link is really useful as you can basically just charge around and uh, all the hits from this will apply bleeds as well. And then you technically don't have to stop except for maybe bosses and rares. And one thing that's absolutely recommended that you go for is the blood magic. And uh, it's just huge quality of life to have uh, not having to worry about mana and just zoom through the campaign. At uh, level 38 you get access to the Eternal Blessing support which makes you able to use a free aura without having to reserve your health. So around there you might want to pick it up and then you can just link it up with the Pride Aura for even more damage. And there's also been a lot of discussions about the Jag technique now from the Gladiator which makes the bleed aggravated. Basically dealing uh, triple damage to enemies all the time even when they're standing still. So for bosses for example it's a huge quality of life to have. It's a no brainer to pick this up as soon as you can. And that's basically it for the leveling part. You basically have the same support games as the one we're using in this setup. Just get more physical damage and also damage over time multipliers. So if you take a look on our gear here, this is our weapon and you don't even need this base but it do give you increased global physical damage on the implicit here which will apply to the shield, uh, the shield throw and also the blades. But what you want to aim for here is that you want to find a weapon with the damage over time multiplier and also has an open suffix on it so you can craft in the physical damage over time multiplier here as well. And that's basically going to be your stat stick. But uh, as mentioned, you don't need the axe. You can use any weapon as you want. You can even use wands if you like. It uh, doesn't really matter uh, what you choose here. And then a Dawnbreaker. Huge armor from this. And we also get physical damage mitigation here. Physical damage taken as fire. And some of the other ones. Cold lightning to fire as well. And uh, if we combine this with our... Flux here we have quite high fire resist 86% so that's quite a bit of mitigation we get from this as well. Using a helm it's basically just uh, life resist and spell suppress and it's uh, all the same for all the other types here. Uh, spell suppress, chaos resist and uh, as mentioned also the base on the items will matter right so we get uh, 3k armor from this alone. And here we get almost 1.5k. And, and then we have some gloves here. It's evasion. That's get transferred to armor. It's 500 here. But as you can see here, spell suppress, life, dexterity is also spell suppress, right? And uh, even more life, resist. 
Life, Spell Suppress, Chaos Resist, you see the pattern really. And uh, here's my really bad rings that I haven't really changed now. Just more uh, resist basically. And uh, this uh, mod here actually, the global physical damage is uh, quite nice if you can get your hands on. As it also improved uh, the shield throw scale and also the bleeds, right? It's from uh, it's one of the betrayals mod that you can have. And uh, on your amulet, I only use this for a uh, to basically get our attributes up. And uh, here could ideally also go for damage over time as a suffix would be the best uh, slot here. And we also went with the damage over time multiplier as the anoint as well on the amulet here. And if you take a look on our flaws, it's nothing crazy really. I was trying to go for, uh, you want the charges when you are hit. I have not yet fixed all of them, but this basically makes us sustain our flask a little bit more. For the life flask, we also get the bleed uh, removal when we use it. Other than that, movement speed, we have uh, one of each element flask here. A topaz, ruby and a sapphire. And this will give us uh, the max resist for each respective element, right? And if you can, try to go for the gain charges when you are hit by an enemy. And this is really awesome as we are specced into unwavering stance. Makes us can't evade enemy attacks, so we will get hit all the time. And we also get a, a stun immunity from this as well. And as we also have so much block chance, right? Combining this with the block mastery, as mentioned earlier, we get life and mana when you block here. And it will just sustain our life basically all the time. And if we take a look on our pantheons here, we're using Soul of the Brian King. And this is basically just for the freeze uh, immunity from this. And then for the lesser one, Soul of Shakari, uh, we get some mitigation to poisons here. Less duration on poison on you, and you can't get afflicted by more than three poisons as well here. And uh, some extra uh, damage over time reduction here to chaos damage. Reduce chaos damage over time taken while on caustic ground. Just helps uh, with that degen a little bit more. And for the bandits, I helped Alira, and that's for all the resist. You get 15 now for all resistant and if you are able go for the one skill point instead if you're able to get your resist up. So let's take a look on the POB real quick here and uh, as you can see we are just a bit over 1 million bleed DPS right now. A 85 character here I'm almost doing that. Uh, the effective hit pool is really high but uh, don't really get fooled by this. Because it's uh, with all the blocks and stuff like that. I think if we take uh, this, we'll disable... Oh, not really. Okay, let's have it like that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there is still the possibility, though, that you get uh, the one hits from bosses. And that's the biggest weakness, right? With the build, it's going to be like one in the hundred when you get actually hit by the boss. And it will deal huge damage, right? But uh, we have other mitigation for that. We have spell suppression and stuff like that, right? And quite a bit uh, of armor as well. But uh, yeah, I think we are quite high actually on the mitigations for this build. I probably want to get some more life, but we have to see how we go with that. I still have some improvements with the gear as you saw earlier. But this is uh, the POB. And uh, let's just see if we can go over, let's go over the skills here right quick. So I went with the Spectral Shear Throw, right? And that's linked with the Cruelty, Vicious Projectile, Volatility, Brutality and Swift Affliction. And we're also using a Shield Charge to move around. And this will also provide with the Maim, so enemies take increased physical damage. So we charge through an enemy and then they will take more damage with the Bleeds, right? And also some fortification here for that and also a faster attack to make us able to charge a little bit faster. Flame Dash is uh, another skill that we want to use as Shield Shards can't uh, go over obstacles. And uh, Flame Dash also helps out with some of the boss mechanics, instant cast basically. We're also using Pride and that's our Aura which makes uh, enemies take uh, more physical damage. And also link this with Eternal Blessing as we are using Blood Magic. We're also using a damage taken with a Molten Shell. 
and also link that with more duration. We have automation with blood rage, just so we get uh, some extra physical damage to life and also we get the uh, frenzy charges when we kill an enemy. This helps out uh, while mapping a little bit, increasing damage, speed, stuff like that. We have a vitality linked with arrogance and this will uh, make us consume a little bit of our life but it's really nice to have that extra life per second I feel on this character. Uh, we're also using Enduring Cry and this is basically working as an extra life potion you could say. Uh, usually use this on bosses and uh, just will heal our character a little bit more uh, when we need it. Get uh, life regen here per second per power. And for curse vulnerability for some extra increased physical damage on uh, enemies here. And also the Endurance Cry we went with uh, Urgent Order just some increased war <coughs> worse cry speed. And also second win for one additional uh, charge, right, with the cry. That's basically the skill setup that we are using. And if we take a look on the skill tree real quick here, we already mentioned a couple that we went over, but Iron Reflexes is a big one, and also Unwavering Stance. Uh, versatile Commandant for the block, really big no to use. And it's really basic, really. Uh, we have blood magic over here. And resolute technique is something that you really want to go for quite early on. Your hits cannot be evaded. Huge for this build. And you have the physical damage wheel right here. We have another physical damage wheel on top over here. And other than that, we have one bleed wheel over here and one under here. And also down here is also for uh, some bleed multiplier and stuff like that. And also down here makes damage ailments go faster for even more damage per bleed. I also like to go for deflection here as well. We get the 25% chance to gain an endurance charge when we block. Just helps to sustain our endurance charges really. We also get a chance to get the uh, Enduring Charges with this one, Aggravation Bastion, and this gives a 10% chance when uh, we kill an enemy while holding a shield. Also helps out with sustaining Enduring Charges. And then we picked up the Resist wheel over here for the Max Resist. Also the Protection Mastery for Corrupted Blood, really nice quality to have early on until you get uh, on one of your jewels. And also Extra Resist for this new node over here. Spell Suppress, right, Mage Bane. We get uh, some Spell Suppress from this, but also Evasion Mastery, quite nice to have. It's a 15% chance to suppress spell damage if uh, Helm, Body Armor, Gloves, Boots have all Evasion. So this is uh, really important that uh, all of your bases are a Evasion rating, right, to get access to that node, it's uh, really good to have. And if we're looking on our sensor here, we're going with the Gladiator and Gratitious Violence makes a bleeding enemy you kill explode, dealing 20% of their maximum life as physical damage. Really nice to have when we're running around mapping, stuff like that. Uh, the more mobs you have, the more explodes you get, and this is also really helpful uh, by killing rares, right? If they have uh, more mobs around them. Jagged Technique. Bleeding you inflict are aggravated and this basically makes it so the bleeds uh, will now always uh, count as they are moving, dealing more damage all of the time. Especially good against some of the bosses that doesn't move that much. Then determined survival, we gain a 50% chance to block from a quick shield and this uh, makes it so we always going to start at 50% uh, no matter what the percent of the shield that we are equipping have. And then more than skill makes the block attack and spell damage is lucky. Uh, just boosting those block numbers up by quite a bit. And I just want to mention some other items that uh, really can improve the build. Uh, we have Death Rush here and this uh, makes us gain adrenaline for up to 3 seconds on kill. And uh, this is just uh, improving the character quite a bit. But uh, for me, I don't really have the spot for it right now, or the space, I'm uh, currently too uh, much resist starved on my build. But uh, Adrenaline, 
do give you a 100% uh, increase to damage boost, which is just insane. You also get the, the movement speed, which is also really nice. So just awesome buff to have while mapping, and it's going to increase your damage by quite a bit. And the other one is going to be Rosletta's Coil, and I believe maybe you have seen this uh, mentioned a couple times, but uh, in these leagues everyone is playing Bleed, so this is uh, stupidly expensive right now, and that's why I didn't mention it in the planner, but it can be good to know if you have missed it out. And another thing that I want to mention is going to be uh, a uh, optional shield, right? So if you manage to get a Shaper shield base or even Warlord works also, you have a chance to get the recover percent of life when blocked. And this obviously works really great with this build and this will basically make you even more immortal than you already were. But uh, as of now, as we are a shield throw build, uh, you do need high armor on the base also. And it's not really easy to get uh, the percent life when block on top of uh, added armor, right? So, uh, but it uh, can be nice to know that this is also an option uh, to use. And uh, it's uh, probably going to be one of those end game builds because you can get armor and... Uh, over 2k with this and you also have the armor evasion base that works the same here you can get some pretty high number but it's uh, not going to be easy to hit both the, the base armor and uh, the life on the block we also have quite a bit of other builds you can transition over to uh, for me i'm probably going to try out the lesser rate of uh, hemorrhage as uh, it's basically use the same items that we already have but uh, instead we now scale the damage from our weapon instead instead of our shield and uh, it uh, really makes push the damage a lot higher with the right investment let me in the comments if you like to see a guide on that or if you have tried out for yourself so what do you think about the sst bleed gladiator have you tried that before or tried another version of it feel free to tell me in the comments below thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and with that said i'll see you in the next one bye